Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's Quinton here, and this is Bootstrap tutorial number three. And in this tutorial, I am gonna show you guys how to download Bootstrap and add it to your website the local way. So this is if you wanna download Bootstrap and actually have the files on your server, uh, how you would implement Bootstrap onto your website. And this is actually the way I prefer doing this. Uh, just because uh, I trust if the website or if the files are on my server that if my server doesn't go down, the files won't go down. But let's say for some reason a CDN goes down uh, and is unavailable, my website's not going to work even though my server's up, which is a bit of a disappointment. So I don't want that to happen and that's why I would rather use a local version of Bootstrap Okay, so to download Bootstrap, you're gonna go over to getbootstrap.com, click on the download button, just like we did in the previous video, and this is gonna take us through to the download page. Now, I explained all of these things in the previous video, and uh, yeah, we used the CDN last in the last video, and in this video, we're gonna take a look at how to uh, use the minified CSS and JavaScript uh, files. So go ahead and click download. That is going to download a zip file for you. And once that's done, you should have a zip file in your downloads folder on your computer. So mine is over here, bootstrap 3.3.2 uh, distribution. Okay. So uh, if I go ahead and open up my finder and we go over to my downloads, Okay, uh, there we go, that is the zip file. I can go ahead and unzip that and I can use these files somewhere else. So what I'm gonna do is actually open up this folder and I'm going to uh, copy all three of those folders. It's a CSS folder, a fonts folder and a JavaScript folder. And I'm gonna go over to my desktop where uh, I can't just click on my desktop anymore. Getting used to Mac is kind of uh, hard for me. Okay, and I'm actually just gonna paste it in the same file or in the same folder as my index file. Okay, so I'm actually still using the folder from the previous tutorial. And I'm gonna go ahead now and hit paste. And that is gonna paste the CSS folder which has a bunch of different CSS files. Okay, and you'll notice we've got the bootstrap theme.css. We've also got bootstrap theme.min.css. And the difference between these two is that this is raw CSS. You guys can open this and read it and edit it if you like, but you actually really don't wanna edit these files. These files are actually not for editing, so, um, don't edit them, but maybe just read them, take a look and see how Bootstrap works. Uh, this is just the theme. And then the .min version of CSS, if you guys ever try and open these files up, you're gonna notice that the code is all compressed and squashed up. And what they actually did was they just took all the spaces out of the code uh, and minified it. So that is where this .min comes from in the name. So they minified the CSS file to be as small as it could possibly be. So it takes up the least amount of space and it loads faster on the server. And uh, that's why we will more often use the .min.css files just because they're smaller in size and they're gonna load a lot faster because all the spaces were taken out. Okay, then we also have bootstrap.css and bootstrap.min.css. Again, same explanation for these two as we have for these two, okay? If you wanna edit Bootstrap or if you ever wanna read Bootstrap, you can go ahead and read that file. This file is gonna be pretty much unreadable. Uh, okay, uh, fonts, we've got a few different fonts that Bootstrap actually provides, uh, such as icons, etc. So if you guys ever wanna make use of these, I'll probably explain them in a future video and there's a bunch of documentation on Bootstrap's website on how to use those icons. Okay, 
and the last folder we have over here contains all the JavaScript files. So we've got bootstrap.js and bootstrap.min.js. Same ex explanation that applied to the others applies here. If you wanna read through the JavaScript file and see how they uh, wrote their code, you can go ahead and read this one. Uh, but the .min version is going to load faster and not only is it going to load faster, it's going to um, be unreadable as well. So there's a good chance that no one will edit the .min JS file just because they won't be able to read the code. Okay, now one thing that we're missing before we can actually start hosting our local files is to actually get a copy of jQuery, okay? So what you need to do is go over to jQuery's website. So instead of using uh, this CDN from Google, what I actually did was I went over to jQuery's website, which is jQuery.com, and I went to the download page, so jQuery.com slash downloads, that's gonna take you to this downloads page where you can pick a version of jQuery that you want. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use the compressed version of jQuery, which uh, is the same as a minified version of those other files that we were talking about just now. Um, so go ahead and click on this compressed link. That's gonna open up a file like this or a web page like this. And this is just a JavaScript file or a jQuery file that has been minified. So this is what a minified file looks like. There are no spaces at all. It looks like a bunch of gibberish. No one's ever gonna edit this, but it does load faster, which is a nice thing. And that's why we use these files on our website. So go ahead and hit Control A, and uh, I'm hitting Command A, by the way, Command C, and that is gonna copy everything Okay, and you can go over to your editor, create a new file and save this in the appropriate place. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit uh, paste and that's pasted the entire jQuery file or, or the contents of that jQuery file. And now we can save that and I wanna save it in tutorial one and I'm gonna save it in this JS folder. So let's call it um, jQuery.min.js, okay? And that is gonna save our file, okay? And we can now jump back over to my finder over here. And as you can see, I have jQuery.min.js inside of the same folder as all of my bootstrap files. So let's just take a look at that one last time. If I go to my desktop and I go to tutorial one, we've got our index file, we've got our CSS folder, fonts folder, and JS folder. And in this JS folder, that's where I just saved my jQuery file. Okay, so everything is relative to um, this index file. Okay, so we've got an index file here, and if we wanna go into one of these folders, we're just gonna um, go slash and the folder name. Okay, so this is where file paths are important because now we're gonna change all of these links to link to our local files instead of linking to the external file on the CDN. So these hrefs all need to change now. Okay, and the CSS files, uh, like we saw before, are now no longer on the CDN. We've actually got them hosted on our computer. So I can go ahead and remove everything from HTTPS to uh, 3.2.2. And um, that's gonna leave us with the correct file path because uh, I pasted all my folders in the same folder as my index file. Okay, if you guys pasted, pasted them somewhere else, you're gonna have to uh, make sure your URL or your href reflects that. But as long as uh, you've pasted them in the same place that I have, in other words, you pasted them 
uh, right here like this. So we've got index, then we've got CSS, fonts, JS. If you did that, perfect. Okay, uh, so let's go back over to the script and we can do the same thing over here. Get rid of everything from HTTPS to the version number. And uh, let's just go ahead and put that forward slash back in there. So um, that one actually needs to go into JS because I saved it in the J JavaScript fol folder and I saved it as jQuery.min.js. So that should work. And then one last one, we just have to get rid of that version number as well. Okay, and we're looking for the bootstrap JavaScript file inside of the JavaScript folder, which is uh, over there. Okay, so now if I hit Command S, that should save everything. And now we can go ahead and test this out by jumping back over to our file, which I've already closed. Okay, so let me open up this index.html file and ev everything opens up and works exactly like it did in the last tutorial. It means we've done everything right. So uh, let me say open with Firefox and immediately I can see something's wrong here because we're not loading uh, j uh, jQuery or we're not loading Bootstrap, sorry. So uh, let's take a look at what might be wrong. Uh, we're going, okay, so these slashes actually aren't supposed to be there. My mistake. The whole time I'm telling you to put them there and we don't actually want them there. Okay, so slash, having a slash beforehand means we need to go back to the root directory uh, and then into a JavaScript folder. So that might work on a server. Uh, and that it's probably the proper way to do it on a server, but this is on my local machine and on my desktop. So we need a relative file path, uh, meaning that uh, everything needs to be relative to our index file. So our index files here, the next thing we're looking for is our CSS files, which are in the CSS folder. So we're just going CSS, we're not using a forward slash at all. And then inside that CSS folder, we're looking for bootstrap.min.js, etc. Okay, so now that I don't have those forward slashes, this should work. And look at that, look how fast that loaded as well because it's on my local server. Um, and now we can go ahead and click on this and the button disappears as well. So everything that we did over here is correct and now we are hosting our own local version of Bootstrap and jQuery. And that is all I have for you guys in this video. So don't forget to subscribe. Please feel free to leave a comment, like, or share this video. It's really gonna help my channel grow. And I will see you guys next time.